Shock horror, the media is poo-pooing on property investors again, saying it's doomed as a market. But with all the changes going on right now, a buy-to-let mortgage is still worth it. Before we jump into that, let me give you the basics of how a mortgage works for buy-to-let purchases. So it's slightly different to residential. In general, the bank will give 75% loan to value. What that means is whatever you are purchasing your property at, let's say 200,000 for example, the bank will give you 150,000 in theory. So you have to find the 50,000 in between as a deposit, plus any fees that you've got, etc. Now, in general, that's amazing when interest rates were 2% because you've got something called rental coverage. So if you borrowed 150,000, oh, also worth noting, investment property is interest only. So you don't repay the mortgage down. Most of them are interest only. So at 2%, that would equal 3,000 pounds per year or 250 PCM. So per calendar month. That's how a mortgage works in general for buy-to-let property. So you think, amazing, great. Well, yes, apart from the fact you then have something called rental coverage. So rental coverage is a bit of protection, if you like, for the lender, the bank giving you the money. And usually it's 125%. What they mean by this is whatever the figure is that they're going to be charging you on a monthly, yearly basis, the rental needs to be 125% of that. So 25% of 250 is £62.50. So you would then, at 125%, you would therefore need £312.50, give or take. So all of that hopefully makes sense to you. However, if we then go, right, let's get rid of that. So if we looked at this now as interest rates at 6.5%, well, first of all, 6.5%, divide that uh, times the 150,000. That's how much your yearly interest is gonna be. And then we're looking at a monthly, so I'll put month there. Per calendar month, we're gonna have 812 pound 50. Of course, you can do the calculations for yourself. So 812 pound 50, well again, if we times that number by 1.25, that's gonna give you your 125% rental coverage. So again, when we're looking at this, we're gonna be looking at just over 1,015 pounds. Okay, now you need to be thinking, okay, that's a minimum that you need to be making. So then, how many 200,000 pound houses are renting at 1,000? Some of them are, and that's absolutely great, but a lot of them will be renting at 900, maybe 950, maybe even 850. So then at that point, what happens? Well, the loan to value, even though they're willing to lend up to 75%, you might find that suddenly you're only getting 65% which means that 35% of 200,000, which would end up being uh, 70,000 pounds. So now we need to put 70,000 in this, plus all of the fees, not that. So finding an extra 20K per property is kind of inhibitive. So you might go, well, there's no point anymore. You can't do it anymore or anything like that. However, that's not quite true. So if we look at a lower purchase price property, and this is a very typical one in my area where I build portfolios for investors, and you've got 120,000, you have to bear in mind that 75% loan to value, you've then got 90,000 from the bank. So if you borrow 90,000 at 6.5%, and then divide that number by 12, that will end up giving you what you have got as your monthly cost impact, which in this case is 487 quid. All right. So again, we're going to times that by 1.25, which gives you your rental coverage. And this is giving you their protection amount, which comes to 609 pound 80 something, right? So this is absolutely covered by this rental, which we would typically get 650 pounds. All right. So suddenly it makes sense again. 
Now you might be going, ah, oh, what's the point, the cash flow, etc. Well, this is where you need to look at the value of property and where it actually comes from. You have to bear in mind though, that the whole benefit of this is icing on the cake. The cake for property is the fact that you can already buy a 120,000 pound asset that in general has long-term capital growth of 7.9% capital growth. Capital growth, by the way, is when the demand for uh, something is higher than the supply and it drives up the prices. And of course, naturally, inflation drives up those prices as well. So the real money here is in this. Yes, of course, you could just rent it for 650 quid. But again, let's, um, let me give an example to you of why it's so powerful still getting leverage. And then you can decide whether it's for you. And by the way, stick behind because in about two minutes, I'm going to give each and every one of you an amazing gift for free just for being here. So let's go through this scenario. So if you've got 650 a month, as I said, and then we times that by 12, we're going to have 7,800. Yep, yeah, 7,800 coming in each month. And then let's scrap 7.9%. Let's be conservative. Now, the key thing with this is, does it go up every single year you're going to own it? No, it goes up and down, guys. But if we said conservatively, a long-term um, capital growth was 5%, of that purchase price, that's gonna be an additional 6,000 pounds. So again, you go, well, that's not bad, right? You're obviously gonna have some cost implications of the rent. Whereas if we go to that rental, uh, sorry, that leveraged example, it's gonna look very different. So again, if in a leveraged example, the bank's putting in 90,000, which is the equivalent of 75%, then we're only putting in 30,000. Now on both examples, I've not included stamp duty bits like that, so they're equal, okay? So now let's look at how that return looks. So the actual money in isn't going to shift too much because the capital growth, 5% of that is still going to be 6,000 in year by year. And obviously it compounds and compounds and compounds. But now that we've got the debt, we're really only going to be making, say, 1,200 a year in rent. But we've got 7,200 versus maybe the 12,000 that we were looking at before, give or take, I think it was 12, 13,000. But now, you've only got £30,000 put in. So if you do 7,200 divided by the 30,000, you'll end up coming with a decimal place number and it will be 0 0.24, yeah, which is 24%. I call this number combined returns. So when you're looking at investing in property, you don't make money in one way, you actually make it in four separate ways. But I'm talking about the two most common that we know is capital growth and rental income. So that combined return is 24%. Whereas, hopefully you've got that 24%. If we go back to the figures before, I can't remember exactly what it was, so I'll say 13,000 to be safe. You do the same figure, of 13,000 and you go, well, 13,000 is way better than 7,200. Yeah, but now you're dividing that number by 120,000, which is going to end up being about 10.8%. Yeah, 10.83%. So it will come out, if you do that figure 13 divided by 120,000, it will come out as 0 0.10888333, something like that, right? So 10.83%. And this is the figure that we're actually caring about. So the reason I say this, I've given examples of this, but I could show you again if we just bring the picture here of 10 random properties that I personally own, and you can see 85% of the money was made from capital growth. And that's why it's so important that leverage is your friend. Now, I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna blow your mind here, but first of all, I wanted to give every single one of you a free gift. So the first gift is a buy-to-let guide, okay? Completely free, no catch whatsoever, and I've got a series of amazing gifts coming out, but for now, you've got this one, and then you're gonna get access to all of the others in the coming months. The way you can get access is I'll put a link in the comments, I'll put it to the top, click on the link and fill in your details. It will be sent straight to you and it will add so much value as well as the other gifts. And again, 
That's just to say thank you for being here and subscribing to the channel. If you're not subscribed yet, by the way, please do that. It's a really good benefit for me and the channel. It shows that you're actually getting value for these videos. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell just down there. All right, so let me talk about that again. The reason why your returns are higher, even though you're getting less in monthly, because that can be confusing with people, is you're putting way less money in. And you might go, well, yeah, but I owe that money back. Well, here's where inflation is your friend. And this is the last thing I'll wrap this video up on. If you've borrowed £90,000 at, say, 5%, it's costing you 4,500 a year. Now, obviously, it's not actually costing you anything because who you rent it out to is going there, okay? Uh, is going to be paying the rent. So that's in interest. Now, interestingly, if we look at inflation, which I'll explain what that is in a second, there's a lot of different figures for inflation. You've got the advertised inflation, and then you've got real inflation. So inflation happens in a lot of different ways. For example, a lot of your day-to-day, -day, like bills that are not included inflation, which is crazy, right? There's also something called shrinkflation. I know it sounds weird, but have you ever bought a packet of crisps recently and you think that is a lot of air? in there, right? Whereas you might go, when I was a boy or when I was a kid, I'd open up a pack of crimbles and they come flying out in my face, right? Or oh, change it. That's called shrinkflation. So you're paying more money for less in there, right? So let's say inflation, which is not, it's actually a lot higher than this, by the way, is 6.5%. That means the value of that is eroding on an annual basis. So what this means, by the way, is if you've got 90,000 in your bank, or let's say 100,000 to make it easy, at the end of the year, you still have 100,000 in there, but it would have eroded. So let's go back to this example, 90,000. If we do 6.5% of 90,000, I think it's 5,850. Yep, so we got 5,850. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't mean the money's gone out. It would actually be better if it was. It means the value of what you can buy costs more. So, have you ever heard the phrase, what's worth more, a pound today or a pound next year? Well, it's a pound today because what a pound can buy in a year's time is lower. Does that make sense? So, I always use the example of a Freddo bar, um, Freddo little chocolate bar. You used to be able to get them from local corner shop for 10 pence, right? And now I saw one the other day for 65 pence. I'm Fuck mine, you have to refinance to buy one, right? So the whole point of inflation is it erodes the value of your money. But get this, if inflation is near or above what you're paying, I know this is such a hard concept to get, but you're getting the money for free. Because think about it, if the lender is loaning that 90,000 to you at 5%, it costs you 4,500. But that's just an interest payment, right? But the value of that 90,000 in one year is 6.5% less. So yes, it's still 90,000, but everyone's earnings goes up over time, and so it erodes by 5,850. This is not the video for me to go into a deep dive in this, but tell you what, put inflation versus interest in the comments. And in enough of you comment in, uh, inflation versus interest, I will do a full deep dive video to really explain this to you because it is mind boggling, right? But in essence, in this example, you're actually getting paid to take on debt. I, I know that's confusing. So. Do I think buy-to-let mortgages are worth it? Yes, I do, in the right areas, in the right situation. So you need to make sure you've got the right rental coverage, you need to make sure you're gonna make money, and you need to make sure you're investing in the right areas. Because if you're investing in an area that's too expensive and the rent's not there, you're gonna have to end up loading in 40, 50% of the money. So my personal area is up in Western South Yorkshire. I work with investors that have got 100K or more that want to invest, and I help them build that portfolio by the way if that sounds like you put APG in the comments but if you got value from this video and you think it will help you grow 
then please make sure you hit subscribe. And as I said, you've got that free gift and many more in the way. And I'm gonna put a link in the description. Make sure you click on there and get your free copy. Me and the team, we worked so hard on making that valuable for you. And I'll see you in the next video.